What's up, everybody, and welcome back to this episode of the Dead Funny Podcast. I'm your host, Chris. Joining me today are my co-hosts, Kelsey and Dylan. What's going on, guys? How are we doing? Doing pretty good. How about yourself? Pretty good. I haven't seen you in a minute, Dylan. Kelsey, me and you have been knocking shit out left and right. So it's been Yes, indeed. Pretty close. I think I've almost seen you every single day this week so far. Except for Monday. I think you have, yeah. Oh, yeah. Except for Monday. I feel, I feel bad for you, Chris. Yeah. It has been an absolute delight. Don't worry about Dylan. Oh, it's been my awesome. fault. Awesome. Clouded shit out. We've been we've been uh on top of that, we we've, we've been talking about some good stuff like fucking split and unbreakable. Yeah, and the- check oh, it what? out. Yes. So if you're watching this podcast, this Tuesday will be two DFUs, not one, but two. But they are the length of one together. But two DFUs, one about Unbreakable, the second one about Split. So that way we got you guys all caught up on all the information that you need before you go and watch Glass. Glass. Oh, God. Yes. I cannot wait. It's going to be fantastic. I'm excited for that movie. It's going to be good. Dude, I, You know, I did not know that Split had anything to do with Unbreakable until... No one did. Like, yeah, yeah. Anyone and, that says like, I have predicted like, that is absolutely one hundred percent lying to you. There was not a single thing in that movie that led to anything in that universe. There was not a thing in the first movie that led to the fact that there would ever be a sequel. There was never anything led in that universe whatsoever in that entire movie until the last five seconds of the end credit scene. Yep, and that's and the movie he, he literally came out sixteen Unbreakable. years later. So yeah. That's a long time to wait for a sequel. Oh, for sure. 100%. Like, I, I put it this way. If they gave us Avengers Infinity War, I was like, all right, you'll get Endgame in 16 years. I'd be like, well, I don't decide. I literally don't even care anymore. I physically just don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hold on to this excitement yeah, for 16 sorry. years. Like, fuck it. <laughs> Better be a damn good movie if it takes 16 fucking years. I'm actually excited. So I don't know if we've officially talked about this on the channel yet. But... There is a lot of talk, which is something I've been following very closely, obviously, that because of the Disney and Fox buyout, which this is this this is true. This part is true. So I guess I'll go ahead and start with saying what's true versus what's rumor. So this part is true, which is that when Disney bought out Fox, the right to use the Fox characters as far as X-Men, Deadpool, stuff like that, the official name went from... Infinity Wars Part 1 and Infinity Wars Part 2 to Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Unknown Title. They changed the name from Infinity Wars Part 2 to Unknown Title after the buyout. Literally like a month after the buyout. That part is true. A lot of people think they did that so that way because in the original Infinity Wars you didn't have like the X-Men and shit show up. So that way they think the reason why they're doing it is so that way they can actually bring them in, probably more of like an in credit scene, not like the end of the movie, but mm-hmm. the in credit scene. Mm-hmm. And we can actually see like the fucking X-Men show up and Deadpool show up and stuff like that, which would be pretty cool. Officially showing that the Marvel world is finally 100% back together in the same studio. Because <clears throat> we have Spider-Man, technically. Like we have shared custody of Spider-Man, I guess is, is, is what <laughs> we have. But yeah. So, that's pretty cool. We'll just have to wait and see on that one. Not 100% sure if it's actually going to happen that way. It would be awesome as fuck to see Deadpool standing on the field with the fucking Avengers that hate him so much. It'd be great. But, we'll see what happens. I think oh, it'd be man. awesome to see a Spider-Man Deadpool movie. That would be cool. The main <coughs> thing that people are calling for is a Wolverine Deadpool movie. But, Hugh Jackman has pretty much been very open about the fact that he has retired the claws. So. Yeah, he won't do it anymore. And, and the moment we get it, but there's someone else playing playing Wolverine, everyone's gonna bitch about it. Oh, for sure. But I did hear that if there was like an end credit scene <laughs> like that, that Hugh Jackman said he would don the claws for that, for sure. Like for everybody to show up together, he said he would do that. But he did th- definitely said he would not do a Deadpool Wolverine movie, which it's been pretty hilarious to watch Ryan Reynolds and him go back and forth on Twitter about it. And Rob Liefeld, the creative Deadpool, to also jump in on it because Hugh Jackman was like, people don't want it. And then Rob Liefeld made like a specific cover art for Deadpool Wolverine movie and was like, if you want to see this movie happen, make sure you at Hugh Jackman in this and like it as much as you can. 
and a shit ton of people did that. And then Hugh Jackman's like, ha, 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 too bad it's not going to happen. And then Ryan Reynolds posted right back on that, or liked his, his tweet and then retweeted it and said, well, it looks like Hugh Jackman also uh, or never got over his al- allergic what was it? Yeah, he never got over his allergic reaction to being selfish. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. They throw so much oh, hate at each other. It's great. I love it. I love it. Only because they're really good friends. Only because they're really good friends. Like, I don't know if you guys follow their fucking shit that closely, but I'm all over their fucking Twitter pages. And um, <laughs> I think they're just hilarious. Their interactions are great. And um, Hugh Jackman hosted a New Year's Eve party. And it was, or well, no, I'm sorry. It was an early Christmas party. And he invited Ryan Reynolds and Jake Gyllenhaal. And Ryan Reynolds showed up in an ugly sweater because Hugh Jackman had told everybody it was an ugly sweater contest. But, in fact, he had only told that to Ryan Reynolds to make him show up in a sweater and everybody else showed up in their casuals. So they took a picture of all three of them together. <laughs> and I thought that was pretty fucking funny. So. You know what Ryan Reynolds got to do? Yeah. All he got to do is just, is just tell him, hey, Hugh Jackman. Deadpool Wolverine movie. Do it for Stanley. Yeah. I don't think Make sure everyone sees it. That way we should ever be allowed. So that's something I kinda of want to touch on. I'm kinda of interested in what you guys think about that. First off, no one should ever pull the Stanley card. That's that's a that, that's a no no. First off. Second off yeah, it really is. people are very upset and I kinda of agree with them that the Stanley Twitter account is still active. People Wait, are seriously, very it's still upset. Going? It's they did it's one thing whenever they were just posting like memories of Stan, and it was like, oh, you know, this is like a, one of Stan's favorite achievements, or this is one of Stan's favorite pictures. Now they're like retweeting shit that other people are saying. It's like, oh yeah, no, this would be pretty cool, and that Stan would be okay with, and people are just nope. livid. Nope. Fucking livid. Nope. The only like, argument that I constantly see back mm-hmm. on that, which I don't agree with, is that people are all like, the chance of Stan actually ever do- running his own Twitter account in the first place was like. Slim to none. It's like, but that doesn't matter. The point of it is, is that the, the literally the Twitter account itself is called the Real Stan Lee. Like that's the name of his Twitter account. It's not Stan Lee. It's the Real Stan Lee. So that's even worse. So it's yeah. I, I personally don't like it. I'm not a fan, and I'm almost a hundred percent sure that since he's passed away, I might be wrong on this. And if I am, Rob Liefeld, I'm sorry. I'm almost hundred percent sure Rob Liefeld has actually stopped retweeting anything that that profile sends out because I believe he's on the same page. Once again, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, Rob Byfield. I love you. You're awesome, and I, I follow you just as closely as I follow the rest of them. So, yeah, even if I I completely agree, Stanley probably did not run his own account, so they're doing what those the people that are running it have been doing what they've been doing all along. But the difference is, is if something came out and it was like, oh my God, Stanley supports this, he had the potential to hear about it and either go, yeah, I do, and speak on it, or be like. No, take it down. Didn't approve. Don't agree. Get the fuck off my thing. And he actually could speak for himself. Now that he's lost that ability, they're they're just throwing around his name and the the legacy that he spent so long building and so long holding up. They're throwing that around at whatever they deem valuable, and they they don't get to do that anymore. Yeah, I, at I all. Agree. It was oh, I, I remember what it was. Um, it was the. They were celebrating. They were, they were saying we were celebrating the cast of. It was Marvel Entertainment that did it. They said we're celebrating the cast of the Spider Verse movie. You guys did a great job. And then it was like the real Stanley retweeted. It was like they absolutely did an amazing job. And it's like, as Stanley probably would have said that, it's still mm-hmm. Stanley's account. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, make another account called like the Words of Stanley or some shit. You know, like we all know that that's you. That's cool. Then you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. Stanley's account, mm-hmm. whatever. But as far as Stanley's yeah. actual account, that should be put to rest, just like Stanley is now put to rest. So, like, I was like, "Fucking hey, dude!" Like, I, I don't know. Like I said, a lot of people are very unhappy with it. I am actually one of those people as well. So, now that I know about it, I'm not too happy with it either. Yeah. Yep. They I keep mean, doing shit like I see it pop up on my feed probably like close to once every other day, where it's like the real Stanley did this or the real Stanley retweeted this, and I'm like, I mean, it, this this shouldn't be a thing. No. Although it's that's, funny because like, cool. like so like my main people that I usually follow on Twitter are like obviously the people that I kind of like look up to, and one of them is obviously Bernie Burns. But it's kind of funny that I brought the whole Rob Liefeld thing because like with Bernie Burns, I like a lot of his stuff. Every once in a while, I'll comment on something. I know he's probably never gonna see it because 
thousands of people comment on shit. Rob Liefeld, yeah. like a lot of people comment on shit, but sometimes there's posts where like they don't. And Rob Liefeld gets into a lot of arguments on Twitter, and I love it. And it's not him being a dick. Like he'll say something. And someone will just try to call him wrong. And it's like, like there was one time where someone tried to argue with him about like what started the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He's like, like out of all the people for you to pick arguments with, don't you think that you might be a little bit bunching above your weight, you know? Like and I agree with him. Like and so like I'll sit there and I'll jump in there too, and it's like one of those like notice me senpai moments where I'm like, please, I hope he likes my comment or something like that. <laughs> I have had him respond to me though. That was cool as shit. Back when we had all these uh allegations out there that Stanley was being abused and this is when he was still alive, that he was being abused and that people were robbing him and taking his money. And there was that whole mishap with his security guard where he actually had to call, have the cops called and remove him off the premises and stuff like that. There was like a lot of stuff like Stanley was in really poor health and everything. And I was really worried. And then Rob Liefeld went and visited him. And then he posted a video of him talking to Stan. <clears throat> saying hello to the fans. And then his comment on that was, just so you guys know, I'm here. Stan's in good health. And I was like, thank you so much. This is really awesome, especially coming from some a, a credible source like you. I really appreciate that. That helps put my mind at ease with all the stuff that's going on out there. And he literally liked my comment and then commented saying, once again, I can only obviously talk about, you know, when I was there. I don't know what his overall situation is with all the other stuff. But as I was there, he was in very good spirits and was very happy to see me. And we had a very great time reminiscing about the old days of comics. And I was like, that's fucking awesome. I was like, thank you so much for responding right. to me. That was awesome. I appreciate it. I hope you have a good rest of your day. <clears throat> I was like, yes, Rob Lightfield talked directly to me. It was awesome. He probably doesn't remember me you. from the one Comic-Con I saw him and took a picture of with him, but, you know, it is what it is. I bet I bet you Coop has that, that entire conversation with him right there printed out no, and no. framed it up on his wall. But I have went and looked at it a couple times where I'm all like, all right, go to my profile, look at my tweets, scroll down until I see the one where Rob Lightfield talked to me. Yep. See, you should thing, actually... Right? You should screenshot that and put it... Don't you have a picture with him? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you should screenshot that and put the two things alongside each other and be like, we've been in contact! Woo! Yep. <laughs> yep. I did not expect that either. Like, whenever I went to go see him and got my comic book signed and stuff like that and graded, like, he was just like... Because his, his family was there. And, I mean... It, it was funny because, like, you, you see they look like they're in, in – well, his whole family was there. His son wasn't there, but his wife and his daughter were. And, like, they look like they're in good spirits, but sooner or later, you you got to think, they probably get tired of getting dragged around all these fucking Comic-Cons. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. um, it was just really, really cool because, like, sh uh, his wife's there. She was running around with uh, a phone taking a video of all the people who were lined up to see him and stuff like that and getting them all to, like, cheer for him and stuff. And then I got up there to him, and I was just, like, you know, I was talking to him and trying to, you know, just ask him some stuff I've always wanted to ask. And um, <clears throat> we're sitting there talking, and then he's all like, all right. He's like, well, go ahead and give your phone to my daughter, and she'll take a picture of us together. And I was like, oh, okay. And I, like, I kind of like stood like probably like a, a, a solid person length between us for sure. And he's like, I mean, you're part of the Deadpool family. Get in here. And he like brought me real close to him. And I was like, oh, well, this is cool as shit. And I was like, all right. So I was still too nervous because like, like he started to look like he's going to put his hand around me, like his arm around my uh -huh. shoulder, and I was still a little too nervous to do that because I don't know like the proper procedures of my first Comic-Con. So I was, didn't know the proper procedures, and I didn't want to get fucking like tackled by somebody like, oh, my God, he's trying to hurt Rob because he definitely had his peoples there. So I just kind of like folded my arms, and then he kind of folded his arms and put his shoulder on my shoulder, and then we took the picture, and I was like, all right, it's cool. So, yep, <sighs> fun stuff. Chris, I adore how you have two modes. Rant, like, there's rant lava butt Chris, and then there's fangirl Chris that's got, like, sparkles and joy. And I just, it it's is. it's a good thing. It's nice to have both. It is. Rant lava butt Chris. <laughs> <laughs> is it inaccurate? It's definitely not. It's nowhere near <laughs> inaccurate. That is for sure. <laughs> Every time I hear lava butt now, I just think of uh, the made up superhero off the yep. ego. Chris. <laughs> well, that's where I'm at, dude. That's where I'm at. Like I said, old man life goals. That's where I want to be. Hopefully in my 60s. By the time I hit my 60s, that's what I want to be doing. Yeah. <laughs> that is not a long time from now. You know it that, right? Not. No, I better be in some Depends and everything. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. No. I think I'm going to be upset if I'm not, like, if I don't have a walker by the time I'm 60. I think I'm going to probably be upset. I'm not going to lie. Like, this is bullshit. I'm 60 years old and uh, I have a fucking walker. This is bullshit. If you're 60 and you don't have a walker, just pay me, like, 10 bucks. I'll just take a baseball bat to your knee. Dylan, we're the same age. You won't have the strength or the energy to do that if you're not dead by then. So, you just kind of fuck that. Probably. Guys, you realize your kids you are going to be in their 30s, right? 
Kids. Like, most likely. Kids. <laughs> Look, let me tell you something. Be talking about Don't give me that crap. Let me tell All you of us love kids one day. Let me tell you something, okay? There is only enough room on this earth for one of me, okay? I was specifically made and sent here on a mission, all right? There can't be two. I'm sorry. There just can't be two. It's just me. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Are you a symbiote? <laughs> like, do you lose part of your do this? Like, what the... Uh, don't answer that question. Don't answer that question. We're not going anywhere near this. When we are I die, avoiding this conversation. When I die, a new me will just miraculously spawn out of nowhere, and it will be the next Koopa to walk the earth and and do the things that I did. I'm like, I'm like, it's, we had to talk about this. You don't know too much about Zelda, but I'm like Link. Like, basically, I get reincarnated, and then there's just a new Koopa. There's the next Koopa. He just, he, he so, just knows. He just knows. He just, you know what? Deadpool's my favorite character. Final Fantasy VII, best game ever created. There's a Koopa before me. No, there wasn't. I was the first. Let's let's, let's be real. I'm too cool. So I'm obviously the first. You're a phoenix, and the lava butt is the start of your transition. Pretty much, yeah. I shit okay. on everything. All throughout. I the like how we're ride. getting a full oh, backstory. God, we're... we're getting a backstory right now. This is this is the origins story right here. <laughs> so. Disney, you're looking for a new superhero? I'm fucking doing the work <laughs> for you. All right? You pretty much have lava pre butt, and post lava butt at this point. Like, I mean, I have literally have given you everything you fucking need. I just need that check, <laughs> though. That's all I'm saying. I, I want, I want to I make that think... Mickey Mouse money. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. Uh, Let's fucking do it. Mickey Mouse money. Oh, man. It'd be great, dude. It'd be great. You're One day, so dude, weird. Never know what's going to happen. Fucking Disney buys us out. You never know what happens. They buy out YouTube channels left and right. They want to own everything. They want to own everything. Make that Disney money, dude. That'd be dope. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'd wear a Mickey Mouse t-shirt every fucking podcast. Let's fucking get it, dude. <laughs> Let's fucking get it. Instead of the liquor t-shirts yeah. that I wear. Like as of now. That'd be, some, that'd be some money right there. Oh, Disney, buy us out. Or promote us or something promote, I us. Will literally... promote us when you don't own us yeah right. don't worry you know what dylan i tell you what dude i'll promote you right now all right you're promoted to what nothing because it literally means nothing right now <laughs> but the moment it means something you're demoted i'm just throwing it out there i'm pre-demoting <laughs> you as of right now pending demotion yeah, yeah yeah like the fucking jim and dwight off the office oh you know what? You're fired. You're not the boss yet, so you can't fire me, okay? But I'm the acting boss, and when I become the boss, you'll be fired. So I'm pre-firing you. You wouldn't dare. Yes, I would. Okay, well, then I'm going to pre-quit. <laughs> I fucking love it. It's so good. That's what you, call you have it. seen that a few too many times. I literally, well, I think we've talked about this plenty of times before, but I've probably yes. seen the yeah. office from start to finish around probably like 100, if not closer to 200 times in completion. That's insane. It's my go-to. Everybody has an office. Every, I literally, first off, I want to take credit for it. I've created a theory that everybody has an office. Everybody has an office, and it's something that you go to, whether it's a movie or a TV show, that you can watch multiple times and it never loses its thunder. And it's something that you go to usually like whenever you're at a law, like you just finished a show and you don't know what else to watch. So you just watch that right quick and then you end up getting into another show or something like that. Everybody has an office. You just don't know what it is yet. And maybe you haven't seen it yet, but everybody has an office at some point in their life. Everybody attains an office. It happens. Mine's, mine's definitely Big Bang Theory. There you go. See, Dylan finishes the show. He goes and watches the Big Bang Theory and then he goes and watches another show. I'm the same way. Not with Big Bang Theory. I've literally never seen an episode. But as soon as I finish the show, it's right back to the office. Like, I literally have 40 episodes left of King of the Hill. I've already seen King of the Hill multiple times, by the way. Nowhere near the office. It's probably like my third full watch of King of the Hill. But they just brought it to Hulu, and I was like, oh, cool. I'm going to watch this. It's probably my full third watch through. i got 20, 40-something episodes left. And then, bam, it's going to go right back to the office. <clears throat> right back to the office. Can't wait. I'm excited. I'm excited. See, you can't. I can't prove your theory wrong because you say even if you haven't found it yet, you have one. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Not you sure I agree with I you. Mean, once again, like I said, I was created with a purpose. You can't prove. Oh, good wrong. lord! And your purpose is to lava it. butt. It might be. It might be. I can't tell you what my purpose is. That's that. That's that's on a need to know basis. 
<laughs> me and the do you know what it is? No, I do not. Exactly. <laughs> Nick Coop, have you... Uh, no. Get a little bit off subject here for a second. Have you played Smite since the uh, newest god came out? Who was the newest god? Arthur. Oh, god, no. I might actually uninstall it just because of that fucking trash. What is this nonsense? What's right. going on? They're bringing King Arthur and Merlin into Smite. The Arthurian pantheon. Why is that a problem? The The problem is, is because the game is called Smite. And do you want to know what you see on a fucking title screen when you start up Smite? It says Smite, Battleground of the Gods. Last time I checked, those two fuckers weren't gods. Legends, sure, but they're not gods. In real mythology, if we actually had a god versus King Arthur, King Arthur would get his shit packed. Wouldn't be close. You can grab the dumbest god out there like Bacchus and he'd fucking crush his ass with a finger. Wouldn't even be close. We're bringing fucking missing legends. I can't wait till we have like fucking Sherlock Holmes and fucking Detective Gadget or whatever the fuck that dumbass's name is. Let's get fucking all kinds uh, of dumbass people in there. Inspector Who else? Gadget. Another fucking retard that we can just throw in here and have fun with. Yeah. Let's get a lot of useless characters. Woot. I'm fucking excited. Let me tell you. And people well, say then. shit like, oh, well, they should have never had fucking Achilles in there. I agree. I don't this is, I don't ever play Achilles. He's stupid. He's not God. Well, Achilles was the son of a god. I understand that. Like he was he was um a demigod, a demigod I yeah, think is what he was. That. Yeah. I don't even think demigod should be in there. Take Hercules out too. Get him out of there. I don't care. Don't bother me. I play Hercules well, a lot in the game well, out Well, technically at one point Hercules no. became more than a demigod. No. I'm not sure in the mythology if he actually became a a a, go a full god. Yeah, that doesn't I know he did in the Disney yeah. movie, but Oh, Disney does no, he not didn't count. even he, he didn't even do yeah. it in the Disney movie. He turned it down to go live with the girl. What the fuck are you talking about? He didn't even No, he he Disney assumed movie. it for a few seconds. It was like, oh, "Look um, at me." And he was glowing and people were congratulating him patting on the back and he looks back at his non-glowy girlfriend and was like, "Nah, love." And then, you know, stopped glowing. Well, that sucks. <laughs> 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 I would have been like, can I get more powerful than this? Is there an option for me to be a double god? And what do I need to do that? They'd be like, well, what about your girlfriend back there? Who? <laughs> she a god? Don't care. What? There's someone else here? Is that just us talking right now? Does she can still I mean, see me? I'm a god. I mean, this is I mean Coop was straight turn Meg down. And go straight for Aphrodite if he ever became a god. It like, depends. I don't man. know what Aphrodite looks like, though. I don't know what Aphrodite looks like in that movie. If she's not as hot as uh, she is in the I'll... game, then she can just fucking kick rocks, dude. Oh. I'll make a new Aphrodite with my double god powers. So, <laughs> see you, dude. Make a new Aphrodite out of Meg. Or Meg, Meg. Dude, yeah, just Meg. because you got a hard-on for Meg doesn't mean everybody else has a hard-on for Meg. Calm the fuck down, all right? Good lord. And... Aphrodite's doing weird crap with her brother in addition to the fact that she has a husband who's kind of a jealous ass and you don't want to take him on. Actually, uh, that's, also that's actually ugly. my favorite Ugh. god. That's my favorite god out of uh, Greek mythology. Hephaestus? It's Hephaestus, yeah. 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 Or as he's also known as Vulcan for Roman. But yeah, Hephaestus. Yeah. Boy. Now, do you, like, do you mean in Smite or do you mean in like mythology? In, in Greek mythology. mythology? In Greek mythology. He's uh -huh. I just, Why I just do you thought, like him so much? I just thought it was really cool. I think his story is really cool. Like, I don't care for the whole Afro bullshit. That could, that could fucking kick rocks. But, like, just the fact that he's kind of, like, always been shit on, but yet he literally has the power to do whatever the fuck he wants, honestly, because he makes all the fucking weapons for the gods that make them as powerful as they are. So, yeah, he's a fucking beast. I, I, I like Hephaestus a lot. Yep. Easily my favorite god. <laughs> Technically, if I had to go Smite, and it was the Greek mythology of Smite, it would be uh, Thanos. But... Or Thanos, Thanatos, Jesus fucking Christ. We were just talking about fucking Avengers. <laughs> Thanatos, good lord. The god of death. I like him. Or the Grim Reaper. So, that's my boy. But, yeah, yeah. But I like Afro a lot, too, whenever it comes to Smite. That's my maid. My maid. My mage. I was going between mid and mage. I cannot fucking talk today. <laughs> that is my <laughs> mid mage. My maid. There you go. Mix maid. them together. My maid. What are you going to play, Chris? Made. All right. He's going to go mid-mage. All right. Got it. Boom. Done. <laughs> I'm just going to throw on your little maid uniform and put on the cute little cap and dance around in your hey, skirt. If fucking they give one to Afro, guarantee I'm buying that shit. It's happening. <laughs> Although she better look as good as she does in the fucking Frost Queen suit because, dude, that's where it's at. It's fucking looking like a, a triple X version like of Elsa, basically. Jeez. <laughs> dope.
I like I like the beach babe suit. I don't. I, I did, and then they made something that was hotter, so then I moved to that one. But the beach babe <laughs> suit, the reason I hated that one is she is so fucking annoying. Like, they made her annoying on purpose. She's one of those, like, classic valley girls. So every time you do, like, a, a voice emoji where it's like, woohoo, she's like, oh, my God, did you totally just see what they just did? Like, OMG. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And it's every, every voice line is like that. Every single one, no matter what you say. Good game's like, ah, good game! And I'm like, bye, you guys! Had fun! And I'm like, oh, oh <laughs> shit. At first, it was funny, and then it got annoying. It got to the point where I literally didn't use VGS with her at all. I was just like, nope. Because basically, like, if you're not in a party with somebody and you got randos playing with you and you don't want to talk to them, you can just use VGS. So you can be like, missing mid, or your enemy is over here, fuckface. What are you doing? And stuff like that. You know? <laughs> Which, VGS is a really fun part of the game, depending on the skins, because... High res, which is good on them. They kind of notice that people use them more as, like, insults. So, like, one of the things that's the biggest is, like, if someone did something good, a lot of people be like, you rock. And now, now it's whenever someone fucks up, they go, you rock, you rock, you rock. Cancel that, cancel that, cancel that. Being like, haha, you suck. Like, and so they started making stuff like that. So one of my favorites with Thanatos is whenever I do, um, that's too bad. He goes, Pathetic. So whenever someone dies, I'll just spam it because you can spam it for like seven times and then it puts you on a cooldown for ten seconds so that way you're not doing it the entire game. So if you do it seven yeah. times, it will put you on a cooldown. And so I'll be like, someone will die and go, pathetic, pathetic, pathetic. Like, it's so great. <laughs> Even though the screen says that I'm saying that's too bad, he's just like, pathetic. It's so good. I love it. <laughs> My recent Thanatos skin that I just bought is that him going woohoo. He literally just claps. So I do woohoo and you just hear. It's so great. It's so fucking great. I love it. <laughs> There's so many times where like someone will die and I'll just go And then it'll fuck you, Coop. <laughs> and I'm just like <laughs> It's so good. I love it. Uh The best woohoo out of all of them is Robot Medusa though, because she's like supposed to be a robot, oh. so she goes Woo Who It's so fucking great. <laughs> I love hearing it every time. Nobody plays her anymore. No, like the robot version of Medusa because she's got way cooler skins but it was like one of the early skins everybody got it and it was like I do so is what it was called and it, they pick it and they go woo who <laughs> and I was like that is fucking great dude I love it oh my god good old Medusa Medusa <sighs> how often do you guys play Smite at this point probably I mean when we actually are trying to play like teams and do conquests we probably play it every day legitimately every day for a good couple hours especially like on the weekends like we'll settle down like around like 11 o'clock at night and we'll probably play it like three four o'clock in the morning trying to play conquest because a conquest Man. match is like the, fa the that's my favorite part about a moba is a conquest match and that's where it's 5v5 and it's huge and it's like very important that everybody plays their role because if someone fucks up their role that lane's getting demolished and now you have to play twice as hard the rest of the team has to play twice as hard to help babysit the people who cannot do their fucking job so like if your carry sucks you're fucked if your solo's sucking you're fucked if your uh, jungle's getting out jungled you're fucked like they, it's really hard to recover from that so it's very big and that's why like I, I like that one because like I like the whole team aspect of it I'm a big person when it comes to teamwork like that I love the team aspect of that so it's like everybody needs to do their role and then it's also one of those things where if like you're playing with people who are assholes it gives me that chance to do the whole like <laughs> I mean my lane was fine that's when you know someone's being an asshole for the night that's when you know someone whenever it's like damn man we lost that game whenever the first person that comes back with I mean I don't know what was happening but my lane was okay do you know that person's just being a jackass <laughs> And then that's when people start fighting. It's like, yeah, well, I went this and this. I had this many kills versus this many deaths, and you went negative. Da 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 da. And then everybody fights, and then we queue up for the next match, and everybody makes up, and then we go in another one, and they get our ass kicked again. It's great. Love it. It's fantastic. It's good game. But there's Conquest, and then Bree, being the smite queen of the channel, is Joust 3v3. And that one's a little bit smaller, and it's a little bit easier. You don't have to really, like, if someone's sucking, it's a lot easier because, like, there's not so many lanes. Like in Conquest, like basically the entire map, there's like three lanes and one of them's bigger than the other. And you have your, you have two people in that lane, one person in the mid lane, one person in the right lane. At least that's the best way to look at it is left to right. And then your base on the bottom of the map, their base on the top. And the whole point is to get to their base and kill their Titan. But there's obstacles on the way to get there. 
<coughs> okay. And so basically, and then you have one person, your last person, your fifth guy is the jungler. And there's two jungles in between the lanes. So it's like left lane, a jungle, mid lane, a jungle, right lane. And if you don't have, like, wards and shit up, you have no idea what's going on in the jungle. Like, people could just be moving around. So for all you know, you're pushing up to try to push up your lane to gain some ground. And their their jungle is just sitting there watching you do it the entire time. And you don't know they're there. And then they just jump out and just gank your ass, and that's it. Because it's not like Halo or something like that where if you die, you spawn back. As you level up and get higher and stronger, it takes longer for you to come back. So whenever you first die, it's like five seconds. But in game, you could be sitting out for like two minutes. Oh, that could be a major problem. Mm -hmm. So it's like one of those things where if like you get a good push and you get in a team fight and you take out three of their people, that could be the end of the game because you could finish it before they get back. <clears throat> the longest I've ever been dead for was sixty nine seconds. That's that's false. That's false. Whenever you hit level twenty, I think you get close up there to like eighty. And then judging on how good you're doing and how good your build is, I think is what I'm talking about. I'm talking seconds. about in conquest. Oh, okay. I don't well, play maybe. Conquest I don't at all. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, you don't really play Conquest. But Conquest maps, and that's the reason why I said it, it, it lasts so long. Like, if you're in a good... If you're if you're doing what you're supposed to do, you could probably finish a Conquest map in, like, 20 to 30 minutes. But if it's a game where, like, you're getting your ass kicked and you're not necessarily able to 100% kick their ass, but you're able to stand there and fight, I've had Conquest <laughs> matches last up to, like, an hour and 10 minutes. And that's an hour and 10 minutes of you just constantly trying to win the game. So whenever you lose one of those, it's demoralizing. That 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 fucking sucks. Like that that hurts the team's morale for sure. Everybody's like, "Man, fuck that blue ass, dude." Uh, we lost and we were there for like an hour and a half and we just got our asses fucking kicked. So Man, you're not necessarily selling me on this game here. It's it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. It but is you have to fun. be able to play with people who know what they're doing. If you're playing with a bunch of people mm -hmm. that don't know what the fuck they're doing, it, it sucks. It really sucks. So, like, if you were to ever start the game, you wouldn't play Conquest right off the bat. You'd play, like, Arena, where it's basically just a you, 5v5 you smackdown. You physically can't play it's Conquest. It's all you do right is just fucking fight each other. There's no if ands, or buts about it. The more deaths you get on the other team, the more points you get. Whoever gets the highest score <laughs> first wins. And then from there, think... you have, like, different game types that are a little bit easier to get to. But basically, what the game is, it's called a MOBA. And it was founded on Conquest. Like, that, that, that is the map MOBA started on. So your League of Legends, your Dotas, and shit like that, fucking Smite, they were founded on Conquest. Like, that is the intended game mode that you're supposed to play. But some of them have made other game modes for people who aren't so serious and want to put that kind of time into being good at Conquest. Because, like yeah. I said, in also other game modes, you can play whoever you want to where this one you have to physically pick a role and be good at that role like when Dylan plays with us he's either playing mm -hmm. guardian or he's playing mid because Dylan's good at mid but if we have someone that's better then Dylan kind of sits down and plays guardian technically guardian is considered the worst role it's usually where you put people who don't know what they're doing but Dylan Dylan doesn't play conquest enough to the point where he's on the same par as us with our roles and as he's already said plenty of times he doesn't play it enough so yeah I don't if he played it more, then he would be a little bit more in that high priority spot whenever it came to mid, because we would be able to, you know, let him run his shit. But whenever you have people like mm -hmm. me and Mike, for instance, we can play any role. It doesn't matter. And we've even gotten to a point where not only can we play any role, we play gods who aren't intended for those roles in those roles, because we've gotten that good at understanding oh, the meta that. of the game. Just because it's a way to mix things up. Like when the Morgan first came out, she's I think to this day is still the only character that's actually considered hard to play like it tells you their difficulty on how easy to hard <laughs> they are to play she's the only character that's still considered hard i i am almost 100 percent positive out of the world i was probably the first person to ever take her into the jungle i did it like almost immediately and she was meant to be a mage middle and i took her into the jungle and like the the, the reason why it's such an accomplishment to be able to do that is because all these characters play differently and all their 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 item builds and shit are different so you have to build these characters outside of the character's comfort zone in order for mm -hmm. them to actually be able to even perform the task, much less excel at it. <clears throat> and it's really interesting. interesting to do that. Now, now, don't get Coop wrong. Morgan isn't the first mage that was no. intended for uh, jungle. She wasn't definitely intended for Al jungle. She was definitely intended yeah, that's for definitely mid. mid. The first mage ever intended for jungle was Al Kwong. Which but... is dumb that they, they have not changed him to a jungler. Like, I mean, they literally took Robin from warrior to jungler, and they haven't fucking changed Al Kwong from mid to jungler. Like, I mean, he obviously gets used in the jungle way more than he gets used in mid. Yeah. I can't think of the last uh, time I've went against a mid Al Kwong. Never. No, nah, it's like... Probably even, never. Uh, even, in, 
even in jails, when I play against an Alquan, they're always like over jungling to the jungle. and shit. Oh, for sure, one hundred percent. I never see him out in the mid because if you play an Alquan and you're out in the mid, you're getting fucked. It fucking he's just so he doesn't ha he doesn't have he's... he doesn't have a good lane clear. No, he doesn't. He doesn't have good lane clear. Uh, he is the only mage that I know of right now that is a melee mage. Mm -hmm. Other mages are like ranged. Mm -hmm. He's the only melee mage. So you have to be right up on him. He can devastate you though, with his moves. Yeah, if he's built right, and he's a, he's a jungle because basically he has an invisibility move, so he can turn invisible for five seconds. So he does that to get behind you, and then he has this thing where he summons these dragons, and he as if he hits you like they're they're small little little dragons, and he has two mm -hmm. options. He can either just shoot all of them together, combine into a bigger dragon at you, and do a lot of damage, or he can hit you, and then they do additional damage as he's hitting you, and each one gets used up with each strike. So he's double-hitting you. Yeah. So if he catches you on that, and this person's built something like attack speed to make him attack faster and lifesteal, mm -hmm. you're, you're, do -do -do. you're done. Oh, eat him. Yeah, and then basically if Gain he gets you down back. below a certain threshold, an X <clears throat> pops up on you, yeah. and he could pop his ult, where he turns to a gigantic dragon and takes you up in the air, eats you, regains all of his health, and then can land wherever he wants to on the map. Yeah. Holy so much, shit! Right, if, yeah, so if you build him right, if you build him right, you could kill someone, gain some of your health back, wait a second for your cooldowns to come back some, land right before it forces you land, land on top of someone else, do damage do -do, to him repeat, as you land, kill him, yeah, and then do the repeat, do -do, repeat, and then invisible away. Now you can't just alt again. You're, 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 yeah, you're, there are uh, yeah, cooldowns the, per moves, and the, the alt had the uh, biggest the cooldowns second, for sure. Yeah, the second the second kill you go for, you it has to be just your your regular basic moves and your your um, magic spells that you can cast if you yeah. like did what Dylan said, which is wait in there because I think you can wait in there for like ten seconds and then it forces you yeah. to come down if you don't come yeah. down by that point. Man, so if so you wait like there and just wait for all his cooldowns to come down and then just land on somebody, and do damage to them, and then literally just use off his cooldowns again and kill him and then turn invisible and just leave. And no one yep. knows where he's at. But how do you guys figure out how to build these guys? So it just... Like, it, it what comes, do you mean by building? It comes to... It comes to it comes down to playing the people and understanding what their needs are. So if you play a god where, like, you use a couple moves and it's like you're, you're basically tapped out on mana, you know that you need to build something to be able to continuously give you mana. So you're going to start building mm -hmm. something to more mana. If you feel like your cooldowns don't come back fast enough, you know that you need to build something that's going to help with your cooldowns like, and bring like, them back like fast. Like Ravana? Holy and shit, like his cooldowns. Yeah. Oh my god. So it's just it's just playing and seeing what you need. Like There's a <laughs> lot of sites out there that give you like builds that were made by pro players and stuff like that. I used to use those a lot, and then I've gotten to the point where like I'm really comfortable with all the gods that I play. So I play them, and every because every two weeks we get like an update, and they can nerf a god. They can power up a god because they're not performing as well as they wanted them to. They can nerf weapons. They can completely remove weapons from the game. And like by, by weapons, I mean items. And that's what you use to build. You get five total items to build on your character. So they can nerf six. an item. They can, oh, six. They can nerf an item. They can buff an item. They can take an item completely out of the game. They do that shit all the time. Like, this game is forever being worked on. And that, that, that's cool because, like, it's like a new god yeah. comes out. And it's like, okay, the new god's fucking broken. And then, in like, two weeks they get nerfed down to where they should be. And then if they nerf them too hard, then two weeks later they buff them up again. And like it's just a constant, forever changing game. Which is funny because one of the gods that constantly gets overlooked all the time because no one ever really wants to play him is Vamon. And that's one of that's my favorite warrior and one of my favorite gods. And he's stupid fucking broken. If you build him right, he is stupid fucking broken. And I found a way to build him right. And they are still buffing this guy because people physically just will not play him in tournaments, so they think, therefore, he's not good enough, so they still buff him, thinking that he needs buff. And I'm just over here, like, I mean, please, continue. I'm okay with it. Because, like, one of his biggest things that he does is his alt, he turns into a gigantic form of himself because a lot of their alts have to deal with their lore. And Vamin's lore is that he was taken over by the eighth avatar of... I can't think of the actual god in the... Um, Hindu mythology, but he was actually taken over as, by the 8th Avatar as this small little pr bald preacher man. And when okay. Robin stole the heavens away, he tricked Robin by saying, I will take the, or you will have to give me the heavens if you cannot give me land big enough for me to walk on. <coughs> and once again, he's this short little midget guy and he's like, okay, well obviously I give you land big enough to walk on. So he gives him a full island and he goes, well let's put an actual steppage on it. If you can't give me land that can survive three steps, then you have to give me the heavens. 
And Robin's like, okay. So then he gave him this gigantic island by himself. Well, then Vaman, as an avatar, then made himself a giant. And so that island only was good enough for one step. So then Robin offered up his body as a second step, and he made himself bigger and literally just basically crushed Robin with his second step almost. So his third step took him up into the heavens, and Robin had to give up the heavens. <clears throat> hmm. So he tricked him. So that's what his alt is, is to turn giant, and he does like a lot of dumb damage. And he has healing going on while he's in his giant form, and he's immune to crowd control, which means like if people can stun you or anything like that, and it doesn't affect you. you hit him, and the best the part is, yep. The best part is the more the damage he takes, he the longer he stays in that form. And a lot of people forget about that. So I'll turn in that form, and then they'll be like, oh, well, I'll just beat the shit out of him. Yeah, you just keep attacking me, dude. You just keep attacking me. We'll see how well that works out for you. So usually yeah, if, very, if, if someone very plays God. against a good Robin, or I'm sorry, if someone plays against a good Vamon, you, you'll see them run away as soon as you use their all. They'll, they'll literally just run away from you because the longer you go without hitting somebody, then you start to shrink, 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 shrink back down to your normal form. <clears throat> So the best thing they can do at that point is actually to flee from you. Right. And now this is where people like me, which I actually might cut this out because I really don't want my build out there on blast. But people like me where I've understood that. So I have done stuff as far as build a little small item called Hazen Katana, which every time I get a basic. So this is this is where the issue is. Whenever he's in his big form, he can't use any of his magic spells. He can only use his basic hits. So mm. whenever he basic hits, he does a lot of damage. But it's easy to run away from you. I built a weapon called Hazen Katana, which if I get one successful basic hit, every time I get a successful basic hit, it debuffs their speed and buffs my speed. So then they can't get away from me. I'm just on their ass the entire time. So they can't, they physically can't run as long as I get one successful basic hit. Then it, I just got to continue to keep hitting them. And if as long as I'm hitting them, if I miss one and then miss another, they'll get away from me. But as long as I'm focused on them, they, they can't leave. They, they physically can't get away from me unless they have like a dash or something to get out of it. And even then, it's still up in the air because I built another crit item that buffs my movement speed and buffs my attack speed as well. So I'm literally just on their ass, just beating the shit out of them. And there's just nothing they can do. So your goal the whole time is just to get into your ult, it sounds like. Uh, it's some gods. Some gods actually, like carries, like they do a lot more damage with just basic hits and stuff like that because they're supposed to, they're, they're called ADCs, which is all damage carry, which means they're just supposed to build like a lot of crit items, which means that when they hit with a basic attack, it does critical damage almost every single time. So where they're normally at start of the game doing like 20 damage at the end with a basic hit. They're supposed to be doing like upwards of a thousand damage per basic hit. Yeah. Good Lord Almighty. Yeah. That's not you know added on some. You some moved your mic down too far, Dylan. We can barely hear. Yeah, you. let's hear. Come bring it back. Uh, there you go. That's and that's not adding on that some hunters have specific moves that like buffs crit buffs or attack speed. Yeah. yeah. Like Artemis that's, has that's one not that's adding that on. Speed. Yeah, yeah Uller buffs crit. his attack speed. Or, no, damage is, is power. No. Yep. So it just depends on what, for, I mean, basically the way I looked at it, getting into it, and I, I try to tell everybody else that's kind of new to Smite, too, is, like, first thing I would do is look at gods that you think look cool, like someone you're actually going to enjoy <laughs> playing. Then understand what their role is and kind of play it a little while, and then understand how to build them, and then you can start looking at picking a god per role. Because that's really what you should have, especially if you ever plan on playing Conquest. You should have one god you're good at per role. Like, I have my overall guardian, my overall hunter, my overall mid, my overall jungle, my overall solo. But, as I've said, I have backups. I, I have backups, and on top of that, I also have gods that don't belong to roles that I can sl slot into any role I want to. Like, Amon is a warrior. He's supposed to go solo lane. I've played him in the jungle. I've played him as a support and have balled out every single time. Like, I can take him to different what? places. Is the jungle? I know you said it was that space in between the lanes where people like a couple somebody can hide, but what is the function of the jungle? So, what the function of the jungle is is that's where all the buffs are. So, there will be buffs for damage, there will be buffs for speed, stuff like that. That each character is supposed to get like the maid, the middle mm -hmm. mage is always supposed to get the damage buff. The jungle's job is to go around to these camps because they usually a jungle character, uh, as we were just talking about with Al Kwong, does not have a good lane clear. And what a lane clear is, is like, so the main basic, so you understand the map layout, the main the basic very of Conquest is, like I said, you have your bases, one at the top, one at the bottom. Mm -hmm. In front of your bases are the Titans. They stay, like, right near your fountain is what it's called. The base is what's called the fountain. But they stay right near that. In front of them are three Phoenixes, one in the left, one on the right, one in the middle. That's, like, your last line of defense. And then in front of that is your tier 2 tower, and in front of that is your tier 1 tower. Every lane looks exactly the same. Both sides of the map okay. look exactly the same. They're identical. So think of folding it in half, they look exactly alike. 
The okay. job is that you start out at your tier one towers. Well, everybody starts in the fountain, and then you move out to tier one fountain whenever you're or t- tier one towers. Whenever you're in the fountain, you can buy items, and it heals you and brings your mana back to full. So if you're ever in a okay. lane and you get and you kill somebody or you get somebody to back is what it's called. You can teleport back to the fountain, and then reheal, re up your mana, buy items, and then head back out there. You can't do that whenever you're out in the field. There's one character in the game that can do that. And her name is Changa. She's a little bunny rabbit who can run back to base and buy her items for her. And then bring all right, her. so. All right, so Kelsey, the maps changed a little bit with like buff wise and stuff like that. Like, where do you see the mana? Um, it probably be better if you I mean, where you... the the picture in Discord, Dylan, versus try to show us on your phone. Yeah, I just oh no, no, I'm not gonna show you on the phone. Okay. Oh shit, I leaned up my phone. I was I leaned up because my back was starting to hurt. Gotcha. Uh, um, I'm gonna see if I can't find the actual. But anyways, the goal is, is to start out at your tier one towers and basically just lane. And what lane means is that every 15 seconds, I think. A lane of minions spawn. It will be three melee mil- minions and three archer minions, and they just run in a okay. direct line. The minions literally clash with each other. Your job is to kill the other team's minions, and they're going to be killing your minions the entire time because that's how you get EXP and gold, is by killing minions and then killing camps. So, once again, that's what each lane has. So, mid, solo, and duo lane, and duo is known as the carry and support because, like I said, carries are supposed to do a shit ton of damage, but they take a long okay. time to get there. The support's job is to keep their carry alive. So, if they're ever getting jumped or anything like that, the support is supposed to kill itself in, in order, like, throw itself to the enemies and let them attack it in order for the carry to get away. The carry is the most right. important. The support's not supposed to get kills. They're supposed to let the carry get as many kills as possible because you want your carry to be out-leveling the other carry. You want them to be as strong as possible. That's how you win games. If you're so they're, failing, they're, you're fucked. So are they All just right. meant to tank? Like, just stand yes, there and take damage? Tankies. Yes, they are big tanky characters. Exactly. 100%. Okay. Some of them do healing. Some of them do speed buffs and shit like that in order to help the carry out. And then later on in the game, when you're done with the laning phase and you're all just fighting as teams, they're there for mm-hmm. the team support. So they're healing the entire team. They're buffing the entire team and shit like that. All right, Kelsey, uh, go to the general in Discord. Yeah. I'm opening it you. right now. Yeah, I'm going to show you um, where the jungle normally like rotates around and stuff. Oh, is it that big green thing in the middle? Uh, Are those two shit. big green sections? That is a very it looks yeah. like there's pads all the way through the jungle. Can anybody well, actually those... go through? Those pads are walls. You can't move through. Yes. Them. The 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 grave oh. splotches. Those are walls. <clears throat> okay. Only, this is the only picture um, I can find of, of the conquest map of how it is right now. So. Interesting. Like fan. So yeah. So as you can kind of see, uh, as I was talking about, you can kind of see the towers. They look like the chess pieces. You can see the mm-hmm. phoenixes, and then the big green C is where the titans at, or, or I think that well, that's a C on this map that I'm looking at. That's a looks like a phoenix, almost like a bigger, like a trident, almost behind the phoenixes. So yeah. Titan. So yeah. Huh. So that's the job, and as you'll see, as you're looking at the map, the left side, the left lane is a little bit bigger than the right one, as far as longer. Yeah, that's the duo lane. Mm-hmm. So it's like the longer lane is always the duo lane. Mid always goes mid. Solo is always for the warriors. They go solo, and the job, your job is to take down both towers, take down the phoenix. And then once you take down the Phoenix, your creeps that start from the Phoenix, by the way, the creeps always start from the Phoenix and run all the way up the lane. Once you take down the Phoenix, your minions, as they call them, become fire minions or fire creeps. And they have flaming weapons and they do more damage and take more damage. Or I'm sorry, and and sustain more damage so they, they don't die as fast. And so it's a lot harder to kill them. So the point is to try to get as many Phoenixes down as possible because the Phoenixes come back to life after a certain amount of time. The towers do not. Well, that would make sense. Right. Once the towers are done, they're gone. That's all there is to that. The phoenixes come back to life. So the point is to try to keep the phoenixes down as much as possible so you keep getting fire creeps in there, and then you do a uh-huh. big push as a full team with a whole bunch of fire creeps, and it's pretty much impossible for them to stop you. You kill. I think I need to watch you guys play this at some point. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Now, this is something that Bree does a lot on her she Twitch, right? It's huge. I'm playing Smite. Smite and Overwatch. Overwatch is... Kind of like this game, but, but a she normally different. plays Joust on Smite. Yeah, she doesn't play Conquest. She likes to play Joust. So now, Conquest is the mode that you've been telling me about, right? Yeah, that's the map you're looking at. Is Conquest. If this so, was what Joust, is Joust? Joust. Those those two, the left lane, the right lane, are completely gone. It's only one lane, and it's three people. And, and like, like a, and like a little tiny jungle to the side. Yeah, there's a little itty bitty jungle to the side. 
But yeah. But anyways, what your original question was that I was getting to is what is the jungler's job and why they're essential? They stay in the jungle and they take down like the the red thing that you're seeing, the purple thing, the white thing. Those are all camps. So they take down these camps for the people that are supposed to pick them up. Like the red one, the mage always gets its damage. But they get the experience mm-hmm. from it because, like I said, they can't take on creep waves. So there's actually monsters there. They have to kill the three monsters, and then it drops the buff. So that's the jungler's job. If you have a good jungler, they're out jungling the other jungler, which means that they've timed it up to where they're moving faster, and then they're also moving to the other side of the jungle, the enemy side, and taking down their camps. Because if you take down their camps, it drops it for your people. They can't pick up the buffs. Ooh. A really okay. dick move. A really dick move is to go over there because there's three minions. There's two little ones and one big one at each camp. The big one is uh-huh. the one that drops the buff. The real dick kill move the big is one. to kill the big leave one the and then kill one little one and then leave the other little one because until that little one dies, it won't reset the timer for the buff to spawn back. I don't I so don't want Until they go one. over there I, and find I, out I, that, that you've done that, one. it literally is just sitting there doing nothing the entire time. Yeah. I don't even kill the other little one. I just kill the big one, take the buff, and go. I do the other little one to get oh. experience, but yeah. And also, cuts oh off man! Teams, get so that's too, that. But... That's that's the big dick move for sure. People do that shit a lot. Now, when you guys are talking about dick moves, do you actually like? Is it frowned upon, or is this something everybody does and then just kind of like laughs at each other, like "Ah, oh, you suck" and move on, kind of thing? Or like people genuinely pissed when you do this? People are genuinely pissed when you do that because, like, basically yeah. the way you gotta look at it is, like I said, whenever you have characters, you're trying to figure out how they work. That blue buff on that right side is extremely Uh important to the Warriors because they're physical characters. So when they use their physical moves, it uses their mana, and it uses a lot of it quick. And they they normally are – they're not, like, in the duo lane. So they can't be like, hey, watch my lane while I back to the Guardian because the Guardian's not over there. So, like, when they back, there's a good chance they could lose a tower. So they have to be very smart about when they go back and very smart about how they use their moves. And one of the reasons they're able to stay in lane is because they have the mana buff. So if you do that to the mana – Oh, they get fucking livid. Oh, you you guys livid. You can ask Chris one time we was playing Cog with I was solo. It was when uh it was when Ravana was still a warrior. It happened to me and I was not happy. Robin. Robin Dylan. The Ravana, Hindus Robin. do not pronounce the last A. I know they don't, it's but I'm not Vamana Hindu. is Vaman. It's not Robin Ravana is Robin. You're good, dude. I never say I, I never say Ravana, I say Ravana. A Ravon. Well, it's or... Ravana, but yeah, Ravon. Uh, no, I, they don't, they don't I pronounce just, the A. The A's are silent. Yeah, I know. Ending I know. A's. It's just fucking so much easier for me to say it in my language. I got you, dude. You're good. <laughs> it's not necessarily your language, but I got you, dude. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> my language it's just I pronunciation, speak. bro. But you're good. You're good. I got you. I feel like Did you just say pronunciation? It. Yeah, just pronunciation. Yeah, exactly. I went there. Look, if he's going to talk dumb, we'll stop. <laughs> then you get to, too. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, so that is the Conquest game mode in a nutshell, pretty much. I mean, you basically mm-hmm. have your warriors who run the side, your carry, your duo that run aside, And once your carry starts, like, shitting on people, a lot, what a lot of people will do, once your carry gets high enough, the Guardian leaves and goes and kind of yep. helps out the other lanes because if your carry is strong enough to kind of, like, hold the other two back, they're fucked unless their guardian leaves as well. But if their guardian leaves, you're just going to shit on the other carry. And the reason why they're fucked is because they're sharing EXP. The longer that guardian stays there, the more he's fucking over that carry at that point. Because they're still sharing EXP to where that carry doesn't have a guardian. And he's getting all that EXP to himself. Or him or her, I guess I should say. Him or her getting mm-hmm. all that EXP to themselves. So they're just fucked. And if they leave and they're still that low of a level, you're just going to shit on them every single time that you get into a fight with them. So you're just going to kill them. And then take the creep wave and then take the tower and keep doing it. So basically what you want to do is get all the way to the Phoenix and not necessarily take the Phoenix unless you have a good shot at it. And then you go group up with the other people and help take their towers down. And then once you can get all the towers down in each lane, then you start moving together as a group and team fighting and then, you know, move towards winning the game. There's a lot of strategy in this. How long a huge strategy game. Huge strategy game. How long is a typical game for you? Like I, well, like I said, when I actually have a team that knows what they're doing, we can end a game mm-hmm. in 25 to 30 minutes. That That's that's the sweet spot. Whenever you have people who don't really pull their weight and you kind of have to, like, help out and do a lot of stuff like that, they start to get out there towards the 40-minute games. Like me. But if you get into a game where, like, the other team is just equally as good and just for some reason you can't get the hold over them, they can't get the hold over you, like I said, my longest game I think was, like, an hour and 40 minutes. 
Oh man, that sounds like a slog. Mm, but it's so much fun. It's it's such a rush, especially when you win. You're like, fuck yeah. The best part is whenever you're shitting on a team so bad early game and then it gets to the 10 minute mark because you can't surrender a game until it hits 10 minutes and then they just automatically <laughs> surrender as soon as like, you, you, you like oh. you're like there was one time where I legitimately I kid you not because you should not be killing people too quickly. I was getting two kills per minute, two kills per minute in mid with Aphrodite. I was just shitting on his cuckoo con I was going against, and his jungle kept trying to help him, and I was shitting on him too. wasn't even close. I was to a point where I was like six levels ahead of him. They should not have been fucking with me anymore. They should have just conceded mid lane, let me do what I wanted, and went and helped their teammates until they got fucking EXP because I was shitting on them, and they were doing nothing but feeding me, which is what that's called. If, like, you're constantly mm -hmm. dying to somebody and they're just gaining level, you're feeding them is what it's called. You can actually report people for feeding. Too. Yeah, you can. Like, if someone literally is just doing nothing but it, just dying, like, if they're, like, 0 and 12, it's like, okay, you are obviously intentional feeding is what it's called, and you can report them for intentional feeding. <clears throat> oh, because they're just or, screwing over your team at that point to make the other guys stronger. Yeah. Or Whether they're doing it intentional or not, that, at that point, it's like, I in my old days of Smite, I used to be like, well, you know, they were actually trying to fight with us, and, you know, it's not like they were, like, doing stuff, like, intentionally to fuck us over, and I was like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's kind of like one of those things, but... At the same time, it's like, um, at the same time, it's like sitting here looking at it, and it's like, you know, if you're not that good and you're really getting shit on, you, maybe you should be playing with bots. Like, I, I don't know what else to tell you. There's a mode for you to play with just computers, so maybe you should go play that until you understand what you're doing. So now, yeah, if someone literally goes like zero and something, yeah, I, I automatically they're getting reported for intentional people. That's happening, especially if we lose. If we win, I might look over it, might be like, eh, well, you know, I'm glad I don't have to play with you anymore. But I've literally mm -hmm. lost games where someone will get mad because someone else called a roll before they did. Because that's one of the other issues. It's like if I lock in warrior, someone else can still pick a warrior. And they'll do it just Okay. Minutes. And if you well, don't then... let them go to the lane, then they literally will just run to the other side of the map and just continually let the other team kill them the entire time. Yeah, people people are fucking jackasses. Like they don't they don't like to play by rules, which is why like I, like I said, I like to find me a team so I don't have to fucking mm -hmm. worry about randos. Because it's, it's, it's hard to know what a rando is going to do. So once I have a team and everybody knows their roles and everybody knows what they're doing, even if we lose, it's still fun because I have that teamwork going on. And, and we're growing and we're learning together. But whenever you have randos, who fucking knows? And then the worst part about the randos is that if they're getting shit on, it's never their fault. It is literally never their fault. So then they're pinging you the entire time where, like, you just hear this ding, 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 and you look on the map, and, like, you'll see it, like, a character being highlighted, so they're pinging that person going, you rock, you rock, cancel that, cancel that, cancel that. And it's like, dude, don't get mad at me because you're shit, all right? I've done that plenty of times where I'll send a message to somebody, I'm like, don't get mad at me because you're bad at the game. Like, I can't come over uh -huh. there and hold your hand and babysit you in your lane. You need to learn how to play the game. So... Because that's the one thing that sucks the most about being jungle. Everybody wants to play jungle, but everybody who actually plays jungle and understands the role knows what I'm about to say is 100% true. If someone is doing terrible in your game, it is 100% your fault to them because you're not coming over and ganking the person. The more time the jungler spends out of lane and not in the jungle, he is constantly losing EXP, and he is losing the chance that that jungler might see that and go over there and start stealing your jungle camps. Because they know that you're in lane. Because if their teammates mm -hmm. can see you, they can see you on the map. As long as you're mm -hmm. in the eyesight of the, the, the other team. They can see you, then they know that you're not in lane. And then go take your jungles. So, but people <laughs> still think it's your fault. And they'll be like, oh, well, my jungler sucked and he wouldn't come gank anybody. It's like, no, dude. It's called, <laughs> you were getting your ass kicked. And then I came over there and tried to help you. And now I'm getting my ass kicked. So, I chose not to help you anymore. I'm sorry, dude. Grow the fuck up and run your lane. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I was doing just fine until I had to help you out. And then guess what? When I went back to the jungle, I was doing just fine again. So, sorry, bro. Sucks to suck. No, no, let's tell you. Yeah. It gets, it gets gruesome sometimes, for sure. We've had some, like, flat out yelling matches in game oh. chat of people just yelling at each other during the game and stuff like that. Because that's the worst. And <laughs> it, it, Mike, Mike feels my pain on this one. If he watches this podcast, he'll definitely say something about it for sure. Is whenever you're a warrior and you're supposed to initiate because you're tanky and you do a lot of damage, when you're a warrior and you're supposed to initiate and you tell your team you're doing it and you initiate and no one is behind you, no one is going in, so you just threw yourself at five people to kill you, that is fucking frustrating. And that is the most livid that people get is when shit like that happens. 
because mm-hmm. oh man because you're like all right i'm glad i just fucking killed myself don't worry i won't initiate it anymore i'll just fucking stick to my lane and fucking do what i'm doing if we lose fuck it you know fuck you like i mean people get fucking <laughs> mad <laughs> people get livid at that shit that is easily the biggest one that and then the support just not helping the carry that is another big fuck up that happens all the time but they'll they won't ward or they'll steal the kills constantly because like if you're about to kill somebody as the, the 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 guardian and the carry's right next to you you're t- you're supposed to stop and let the carry mm-hmm. take it. Even if you did 98% of the damage, you're supposed to stop and let the carry have the last hit. Because your That's job That's the whole purpose of that character. Exactly. Yeah. There's literally a character that is a support character. His name is Ganesh, where he physically cannot get a kill unless there is no one alive. He gets a kill, it automatically gives it to the nearest god to him. Hmm. And they get the EXP for it. And that is like yeah. them showing you proof <laughs> well, that you are not supposed to be getting kills. Now, when you're well, teamed up at that point, sure. By all means, kill as many people as you can, because at that point, you just want the other team to die. But until your character, until your carry hits a level 20, you should be doing everything you can to support your carry. Everything you can. Well, Chris is a bit wrong about Ganesh. Like, you still have to be in a certain range to for it to give it to you. Like, range, whatever, same thing. Yeah, like, if you're if you're in your dual lane, and you and Solo are the only ones left Solo's in his lane, it's not giving it to the Solo. It's he's way out of the range. There, there is a range. Well, that would, that would, I don't, I don't play Guardian awesome. that much. That would be very awesome though, because then no matter what, someone's getting that that exp for that kill, and it's obviously going to help everyone else more than it's going to help the Guardian, because the Guardian don't really do shit except fucking take damage, anyways. Yeah, I don't, I don't play, I don't play Guardian that much, but it's just one of those things where it's like. I get on teams, and then I play Guardian, and then I hear a lot of people go, why is one of our best players playing Guardian? That makes absolutely zero sense. One of our best players should definitely be someone who's actually able to kill people. So, yeah. I don't play Guardian that much because of that. And then whenever I do play Guardian, I play somebody who I can come back with and beat ass with later, whether it's Vamana or Afro. I'll do that a lot where I'll Afro because we have a, a friend that we're so called, back. called Cece, uh, or Steven, and we play with him a lot. It's one of Dylan's friends, and... Um, I'll literally go Afro and I'll just be linked to him the entire time and heal him. And then I'll literally let him like get to the point where he's shitting on the other guys. And then I'll let the jungle have our jungle and I'll just go counter jungle with Afro. So I'll just go take down the camps that the, the other jungle is supposed to be doing and get a shit ton of EXP. And then I'll just start ganking people. I'll come up behind them and just start fucking them up with Afro and just getting kills. And it's like we have two jungles going on. And CC's completely fine because he's over there being able to do what he wants. And if he's ever in trouble, he just says something. I go over there and heal him back up 100%. Pop a med on him so he's got full mana. And I leave again. And then he's got it. That's it. He doesn't even have to go back to lane. He's good to go. Just, just keep soldiering on. Yeah, she's fucking broken. A lot of people don't think she is, but she's really fucking broken. I love Afro. She's so funny. Not to mention, not to mention when you hook to someone with Afro, if you CC yourself or bubble yourself, you bubble the person you're hooked to as well and CC the person you're hooked to. Yeah, that's the stuff that I love to do is like whenever people are like running from me and I can't catch them because she's a little slow. She's a little slower than other gods. I'll just like kiss who's ever next to me because that's what her link is. She she does like a blow a kiss and then whenever it touches them, it links them together. You see like this whole link between them and anything she mm-hmm. does, it does on them as well. And then I'll just pop one of my moves, and it pops the move on that person, and then it kills the person that, that's running from him. So I'll get a kill, and I won't even be anywhere near him. <laughs> I'll just fucking pop my kid away, and it does like an AOE blast and just fucking hits them because it pops it on me and them. It's fucking great. I love it. She's so good. She's such a fucking good god. Oh, my God. Easily one of my faves. Easily. But, yeah, it's a fun game. It is a fun game. You said you have Xbox 360, right? Yeah. I believe... Xbox 360 and Xbox can play together. I'm almost 100% positive on that. So now, you mean I Xbox know. One? Or Xbox I know we can play with... What did I say? I know I know we can play with computers now. Well, sorry, you said Xbox. My guess is Smite's not on the original Xbox. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess you. Sorry. I just consider okay. whatever I yeah. have to be the, the, the Xbox because that's just... The like, Xbox and everything else gets a... Yeah. Okay. That's what I have, so <laughs> it's like, I just, I'm going to play my Xbox. I don't go and buy, oh, I'm play my Xbox One X. I just, I'm going to play my Xbox. So, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I believe they can play together because I'm pretty sure it still uses the same overall network. Because I know like back when Destiny was still, you know, a thing, uh, fucking Xbox 360 and Xbox people could play together. Or Xbox One. Sorry, Xbox One. But still... Because, I mean, Smite's a free game, so that's the best part about it. You don't have to pay anything for it. You just fucking download it and go. It's fucking great. Really? I thought you had to nope. pay something. Nope. It's if you want all the gods. You pay 20 bucks, and it gives you every uh, single god that's in the game, and then every single god that will ever come out. Can you play it on PC? 
Yeah. I yes. forgot about that. Duh. Yeah. And actually, say we can, it's you, cross platform. You can play with us on PC. It's yeah. cross platform. You can play with us so on PC, PC players can play with Xbox as well. Why the hell haven't we done this? I do. It, well, that just happened. The cross platform just happened. Oh, okay. It's the start of the new year. But yeah, we definitely need to play Smite. As soon point. as we do it, we're definitely probably going to have to party up in Discord. Which because, is fine. I mean, yeah. I love Discord. So it's good. I think Discord is better than the Xbox part anyway. So <laughs> I'm completely fine with that. <laughs> completely fine with that. So yeah, we'll have to look into that. Maybe we can get like a dead funny team for Conquest or something going together and we can all jump in as the dead funny group. The only person that we couldn't Maybe. get would be Brandon because he thinks Smite is absolute ass. Anytime you talk we about couldn't Smite peer pressure Brandon, him into like, it? No, no. Every time I tried. He, I tried so it's hard. Because, it's because he's worse than me at it. Let me put it to you this way. Like, the only time Brandon played Smite for anybody was for me because there was a skin that I wanted and the only way I could get it was by referring two friends and they had to play a total of 10 hours. And I don't even think he completed the 10 hours. So, yeah. okay, so he will not join us. Yeah, got it. Much. He's not a big fan of Smite at all, at all. But anyways, it's about time to wrap it up. We definitely lost track of time here. Went on. Went on. <laughs> but if you enjoy this content, I would like to say please like and subscribe. That is the best way to support us for sure. Especially if you're new, subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notifications. That way you can get notified every time we upload a new video. Plus, if we do do go to do this, the whole smite thing, how else are you going to know if you're not fucking notified? So, boom. Also, on top of that, make sure you hit us up in the comments below. Let us know if there's anything you wanted us to specifically talk about or something that we touched on that we didn't quite finish and you kind of want to know what our final thoughts are. Anything like that, hit us in the comments below. We also got the Twitter profiles down there. Make sure you check out the Dead Funny Twitter profile and follow it so that way you can also get another form of notifications for different things going on that we can't necessarily notify you on on YouTube. Because once we get to a point where we can start doing like team ups and stuff like that, like the whole Smite thing, that will definitely be a notification that you would only get on Twitter saying, hey, guess what? Dead Funny's going to play Smite tonight. So check it out. This is the time. This is the place. This is the day. So therefore, once again, follow that. We also have Twitch streams going where you can jump in and watch us play Smite and other fun, fantastic games that we've got going on. It's a lot of fun. But in all this, I hope you have a great rest of your week, and we will see you guys next time.